Hello, my name is Matthew Markwit, and this is the second video in the Level Design uh, Paper Map Tutorial Series. In this particular video, I'd like to introduce you to Photoshop. Um, Photoshop is obviously not the only program you can use to create a paper map, um, but it is the one that I use, and uh, because it is an industry standard tool and you see it at most companies, uh, that's why I'm going to show you. Now, I have seen students in the past or other people use uh, MS Paint, GIMP, uh, even Word, I've seen people use. Uh, there even there's the editors out there that you can find that kind of automate some of the stuff for you, uh, but you're kind of restricted in what you can use. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. But of course, this particular video focuses on Photoshop, and it's also in, in this video too is an introduction of Photoshop. So if you do not know it at all, you're okay because I will talk as if you don't know it at all. So if you are a veteran of Photoshop, you might want to skip into the next video. Uh, however, you might find a couple of things still fairly useful. So first things first, we do have to open up Photoshop. So I'm going to click on the icon down here below and open up the latest release of Photoshop, which at the time of this video is CC 2017. Now this is your basic load up window. I'm not a huge fan of this new style window. I like to get straight into it. So we can click on here and go to essentials. Right, and this is our workspace. If you want to make sure that it always loads up in Essentials and doesn't do uh, that workspace there that we saw, we can go to Edit, Preferences, and General, and then we can choose right here where it says Show st uh, Start Workspace. We can shut that off and then hit OK, and next time I load up Photoshop, it will look like this. Now, this is not the default Essentials. I've actually changed it a little bit. I'm going to reset it real quick, so we'll reset. The default just has this libraries over here on the side, um, and we'll, I'll talk about all that in a moment. Now, in general, I want you to see the layout of Photoshop and how it works. So just like most programs, you have your drop-down menu, right? And within the drop-down menu, if something happens to have a hotkey, you'll actually see it loaded up. So, you know, on the side here. So Alt-Control-C is to change the canvas size, right? Which we'll actually get to a little bit later. Um, so if you ever forget a hotkey, you can always refind it again here in the drop-down menu. Now we have our toolbar on the side, and on toolbar, if you actually hover over an item for a few seconds, it will show you what it is, in this case, the move tool. Uh, that's kind of cool, so if you kind of forget some items, you can hover over it, and it will give you a little bit of a description of what it is, and also the hotkey. If you click the arrow here, you can compact it into two layers. This is actually a very old-school Photoshop thing. If you've used Photoshop for long enough, you know about that and how it used to look like that, and they've changed it to a single row, but I prefer the new single row. And then, of course, you have your workspace here, and you can change other workspaces. So I had, you know, this is something different before. I click on this, and there's like 3D workspace, a graphic and web workspace, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm actually going to switch it back to Essentials. Now, here's the thing about the workspace is that you can move it around. So we can grab our arrow and kind of uh, shrink it or move it around. And this is important, of course, if you need more real estate to see stuff like libraries I don't use. So I usually pull this off, shut off the tab, right? If I ever want it again, it's not lost forever. We can just click on Windows and come down here to Libraries and turn it on or any other of these options, right? Um, but we can move things around. We can switch, right? So I can move color to this side or swatches this kind of color and so on and so forth. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do. You can pull them off as separate tabs and move them somewhere else. So you have a dual monitor, an ultra wide. You can kind of move things off to the side any way that you want. Now, if you happen to like this layout and you want to save it, you can come over here and go uh, New Workspace, and it will save it, and you call it whatever you want. It'll load up over here. However, if you just want to reset it back to the initial workspace, in this case of Essentials, you can just hit Reset Essentials and reset everything again. Um, once again, I can pull off libraries and get rid of that because this is the way I prefer it. Okay, so that in general is your basic user interface. So now that we know what you, uh, Photoshop looks like, now we got to create something or open something up. Now your hotkeys, if you go to file up here, the two hotkeys to open or uh, start something new are control N for a new file and control O for opening a file. Now I'm not going to open a file, we're going to create a new one. So we can click on this or you can just hit control N. And this dialog pops up, a little different in this version of Photoshop than I've ever seen before. Now, I've already used Photoshop, so there are some differences uh, that are not uh, default. One of them here is the default is set to, instead of pixels, it's set to inches. So you can click on this drop down and set it to pixels because as long as we are actually doing uh, content that stays on a computer screen and doesn't leave the screen at all, then we're going to want to leave it at pixels. If we're going to print, sure, you know, you can change it to something else for printing purposes, but pixels is perfect when you're trying to create a document. 
document. Now, there's no right size to start at. However, you usually want to start at a very large size. So we're going to change our width here, and we're going to leave it in a landscape mode as opposed to a portrait mode, basically meaning it's wider uh, than it is tall. So we're going to type in 3,000 pixels here by 2000. Now this isn't to say that this is the document size you always want to use. It's a good place to start. If you want to try something else, you want to make it way bigger, you know, and have because the level's massive, then that's fine too, right? But we're just going to leave it at this for now. Resolution is set to 72 dots per inch, okay? Or in this case, pixels per inch, okay? If you want to print it as a poster, 150 would be fine. 300 DPI is for something that you hold up to your face and read. Uh, but we're going to leave it at 72 because once again, it's staying on the computer screen. We're not worrying about printing it. Color mode, same thing. If you want to print it, you can choose something different, CMYK, whatever. Otherwise, leave it RGB if it's staying on the computer screen. Uh, the rest of the stuff really doesn't matter. You can change the color of what the background is. Default, we're just going to leave it white, but you can choose something different, right, or whatever. Uh, but once you have all that stuff done, you can just hit Create, and it'll create our document. That is 3,000 pixels wide and 2,000 pixels tall. Now, if any given point you wanted to create, and I'm actually going to real quick... Uh, create a circle here in the middle just so I can show you a difference uh, between uh, a couple of different things. Let's just, just to say we want to change the size of this image, right? We need more real estate after we started working in it. Well, you can go up to edit and go, and, and actually, sorry, image, and go image size to change something, but the problem is let's say we want to make it even taller, right? So maybe we'll do 3,500 pixels, and this actually, by the way, will increase the whole thing, scale it up, um, if you have the lock on, if I actually, let me just cancel that real quick and we'll do this again. So if I go to image, image size, and I shut off the lock so it doesn't lock this, so it doesn't keep its proportions, and I actually make it way taller than it is wider, so we'll go 3,500, and I hit OK. Notice what happens to the circle when it's done. So it's thinking because it's a fairly large image. Well, now it's stretched the circle. So if you've actually done any work in the scene, yeah, you can change the image size, but it's going to stretch it if you unlock it. And if you do lock it and increase the size and you're not using vector, which is something we'll talk about in the next video, uh, or next couple of videos, I should say, then you're going to have an issue with things that's not looking right when they scale up, okay? So you typically want, instead of using image size, we're going to go over here and we'll go image and do canvas size. Cool thing about canvas size is now I can say add that extra height and go 3,500 here, right? And then you can change where it loads up, right? So I can have it only, you know, add all the pixels up here and this stays the bottom or whatever by moving this thing around, right? But we're just going to leave it the default so that it adds the extra um, pixels. 1,500 pixels are basically uh, 750 or so like up here and down here at the same time. And then we uh, hit OK here and you'll see, boom, now we've increased the size of our image in that sense. Okay, so that is uh, basically how you can rescale after you've created an image. So don't ever feel like, oh man, I already started the image, I can't do anything with it. Well, yeah, if you don't know exactly the size, you can always change it later. Now, navigating with an image, and I'm going to turn this uh, circle back on so it makes more sense, but navigating within an image is pretty simple. You hold down Alt and use the middle mouse wheel, like scrolling in and out, and you can zoom in and out. And once you're zoomed in, if you hold space bar, you can pan. Right? So you can see right here that I can kind of pan around holding down a space bar. Now, there are the same tools over here where you can do it using a tool to zoom in and out. And this is the tool to pan around. But obviously, if I'm already in a tool, say a paintbrush, and I don't want to switch out of my tool, then I can right, just hold down the Alt key and use middle mouse wheel and uh, space bar to pan around and still keep that tool without having to constantly switch back and forth on the side. The only thing useful about some of these tools is if you want to get them to kind of like say click on this and go fit on the screen or fill the screen or 100%, you know, whatever you can actually get. So this is actually one to one image ratio. So you can tell this image is pretty big. Right, so those, or double click it over here and, it'll, and it will do 100%. So some of that's useful, but overall I don't like to use it. Uh, the other semi-useful tool within the pan, is not the pan itself, but the rotate view. You can actually rotate the view, so I can go in here and rotate it, uh, or whatever. Right. Um, if I hold shift, I can uh, I can uh, rotate it inter increments. This helps, like say, if you're using a Wacom tablet or a Cintiq where you're drawing on the screen itself. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, it's not super super useful. So, anyways, uh, I'll just switch this back to the hand tool, and there you go. So that's kind of how you can move around and navigate within Photoshop. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is grids. So now I'm going to hide the circle again here. And uh, grids. In order to show grids, you go up to the top where it says View. Go where it says show, and you can turn on a grid. 
And once you turn the grid on, you'll see, of course, a grid. In this case, it is a grid um, that, um, that has uh, four subdivisions with it and whatever. But we can change the grid, like how often the boxes show up, how many subdivisions are in there. Now, by default, you actually don't have this on either. This is actually called rulers. So you can go up to view, and if you're not seeing that, which you shouldn't by default, right? Control R is actually the hotkey to turn your rulers on and off. Right, and you can actually see that if I right click on this, I can change the rulers to something different. In this case, I do have it set to pixels. Yours by default will be inches, even if you started the image by pixels. So maybe you switch it to pixels so it makes more sense, right? So we know how many pixels we're moving across, but it's up to you. You can have it measure inches or anything else. And you see it's both on the top and on the bottom. The other, uh, the other cool thing about the ruler system, right, is you actually pull out guidelines from this. So I, if I click on, the, on one of these rulers, hold my mouse down and drag it in the scene, I can drag in a guideline. Now, right now, because I have my snap set on, it's snapping to the current grid. So if I want to put it anywhere, of course, I have to go up to the view here. We can go down and show and shut off grid. And now if I kind of move my, you can see these, these uh, points here can go anywhere. And these will also be snapped too. So if you have layers or you have anything else, you can snap things to those guides and it helps you work. Um, now, if you pull out a grid point and you want it to go the other direction, you can hold down um, Alt and it will change it the other direction or let go of it and it will go back to the initial direction. Or, of course, you can just pull it from the top and it will do a horizontal one instead. Right, So these can be pulled in and out. If you want to get rid of them, uh, you can either just stop showing them. So if we actually go up to the top where it says View, we can do Show. We can have it not show guides so the guides are hidden. Right, Or we can turn them back on come over here and make sure that our guides are, um, are still being shown. You can drag out, and once I drag a new guide, you can see it pops up and shows all the other ones. But let's just say we want to get rid of them. I'm going to switch to the Move tool here. If you want to get rid of them, you can just click on a guide and drag it back into the ruler, and uh, these guides will uh, disappear. Okay. So there's other ways. You can place guides in very specific places. You kind of hover them, and when it gets to the middle of the document, it will snap. You'll see it's like kind of popping. That's actually it snapping in the direct middle. So if you want uh, to do that, that's a quick way to have it snap in the direct middle. And you can also do that with the version coming up on here for the other direction. So we can get an exact perfect cut down the middle of the document in both directions. So, like, so we have four different workspaces Okay, so that's one thing you can do, as I showed you before already, the grids. But how do we change some of the stuff? Like, how do we change the grid? How do we change how often it repeats? Maybe even the color. Um, I'm actually going to turn grids back on. So we'll go to view here and we'll do show grids. And um, in order to change it, I'm going to zoom in. But in order to change it, we're going to go up here to uh, edit preferences. And we're going to choose, in this particular case, um, guides, grids, and slices. So you can choose any of these. I've already showed you guys preferences, but you can come in here, even units and rulers, right, where I just showed you. You can switch it instead of right-clicking up here. I can switch this to whatever I want, you know, and so on. Um, but as far as the guides, grids, and slices go, uh, here's your grid, and this is the color it defaults at, which is black. If you want to change it to, say, blue, you can change it to blue or green or whatever, right? I'm just going to leave it at black. Okay, and then also your grid line will say, right, how many every four inches. So even if it is showing pixels, it will still ever be every four inches in which a grid line shows up. If I want to say maybe every 100 and set this to pixels, every 100 pixels, now we'll have that black line at every 100 pixels. And then the subdivisions are four. So that would be basically 20, every 25 pixels are these. So if you want to say you want it to be five, so now it's every 20 pixels and so on. So it's up to you how you you want to do the grid how precise you want to get but that will help you create now this of course is not actually in the document so you can shut this off at any time it just helps you create your document uh, as far as that goes now let's quickly talk about uh, brushes and uh, some other stuff before we end the video and um, let me go over here and this is your brush tool and so if you want to paint something, um, typically we're going to talk about layers a little bit more in the next video, but you never want to paint on the background layer, right, or on a, on a, on a different layer. We're going to actually start a new layer by clicking on this button over here. And uh, this is our new layer button. There's a hotkeys to, to work that and stuff too, but I'm just going to show you that. You click on new layer. Now we can paint on the scene. So I can come in here and paint. Now I have a square brush loaded up, okay, but your default brush will be something like this, a round brush here. So you look something to this effect, and if I paint, you'll kind of see that, right? And it actually does snap to the grids a little bit. Now, we're going to show you some other tools. I just want to show you the paintbrush, but I will show you some other tools that are better than this. But technically, if I start moving down, and even if I'm just slightly off, it will snap. 
um, and I kind of moved a little too far and the brush kind of went over. You can also click hold your mouse down and hold or um, hold shift down I should say and click somewhere else and it'll draw a straight line right from whatever that point is so you can kind of do something real quick like this uh, any kind of shapes like that but as I said before we're not necessarily going to use the brush tool to do all of our work but I do want to teach you it because if you want to say maybe do something real quick uh, and then maybe paint over it again uh, using vectors which we'll talk about a little bit later uh, you can do that. Um, now, what some other tools and some other concepts with the brush. Well, the brush itself, right, it has a default size when it comes out. If you want to change the size of the brush, you can use the bracket keys, which are next to the letter P. And if you hit the right bracket, it increases the size. Left bracket decreases. You can even change it up here with this little drop-down menu and change the size here or type in the size that you want here. Okay, and so we can see that we have a circle brush. Now, if we're doing, you know, like a paper map, a circle brush doesn't make as much sense. So maybe we want to switch it to something like a square brush. Um, square brushes aren't loaded by default, so you have to come over here to this little uh, tool and uh, go load brushes. Um, or actually, excuse me, if you have your own personal brushes, you can load brushes this way, but there are some square brushes default in Photoshop that aren't loaded in here. We'll just click on square brushes. If you hit OK, it will replace everything in here with just square brushes. You can always change that, bring back the, the default stuff. But if you hit a pen, it'll add it to the bottom. So now if I scroll to the bottom, I'll now see my square brushes. I can come in here and use square brushes instead. Right, so we can just hold shift and draw straight lines and start creating a shape or whatever. Of course, we're going to get this issue where things don't perfectly line up. I mean, yeah, you can spend time trying to fix it. You can come in there and delete stuff. Um, you know, you have your marquee tool right here, which is kind of cool. This will, you know, you can make a selection and it actually snaps to the grid. So we can make a selection of snapping to that grid. Now, if I just hit delete on my keyboard, it will delete those edges and have a nice clean edge. So theoretically, you can do that. Of course, you're going to have varying line widths if you're like you're not careful with where you're putting your your brush or whatever, and it might take a while. I'll show you some other tools that lets us be precise too. Uh, too uh, also, I should say, but this is you know one method of of actually creating content. Um, and then so you can also change your color, right? So over here we have black and white as our default. We can click on this and we can go say maybe red, or you know we can use this on the side here to change it to uh, you know a greenish bluish kind of thing and then we can kind of paint if I switch back to my paintbrush tool here and we can paint in that color instead. Now it does have a uh, two colors here so if you click on this arrow it'll switch the colors or the hotkey X on your keyboard and we can change it so if you're using two colors quite often you can hit that hit X switch to the next color and now you can paint uh, in whatever colors you want. Um, now the other cool thing about the paint brushes does remember your other brushes that you've used. So if I click back up here, uh, sorry, click on the paint print paintbrush right here all of your latest tool brushes you've used right they're all here so if I chose something different let's just say I scroll down here and there's other ways of looking at brushes too this is the default but if we want to make them um, larger we can come in here and click on large thumbnails and see much larger thumbnails of the brushes and say choose something like this and now I can paint with something like this if I really wanted to um, and whatever so we can change all of that content up we can have it just list things and whatever um, but like I said, if you do download brushes or find something on the internet, you can load them up this way. They're ABR files, right? So you can just load those up and you can append them or just replace brushes there, right? You can just uh, reset brushes back to the normal and so on, okay? Um, and then uh, I think that's about it for this particular video. Uh, but like I said, it was just a quick introduction to Photoshop, understanding some of the tools. We'll talk about more content. We'll talk about layers and vectors in the following videos. Hopefully you learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next video.